understanding Bible timelines of the Old Testament, the New Testament, the Tribulation, the Millennium, and the New Jerusalem. This is part two of two. Welcome to church, folks. This is Reverend Al Bradford. In this continuation of my Bible uh, timeline, as you see here, we have traveled from 4000 BC all the way up to the present time, which is during the church age. Uh, this is after Jesus has come to the earth here and was born and has died. Uh, presently, we're living in the year of 2019. We're going to be looking at the tribulation period, the millennium period, uh, during this video, and also the, the uh, eternal resting place after the millennium. But there are details between here that i like to discuss with you, and let's review these, and I'm going to be giving you a great deal of Bible scriptures that I will not read them all. You will have to do your own study, but I encourage you to do so. I believe this will be very enlightening in your, your studies and the things that you're going to do in life. Uh, this is really going to be great. So let's have a great time. Continuing from part one, we will take a closer look at the rapture and the great tribulation period. Uh, this is the church age, what we're looking at right now. The church, meaning the raptured, uh, the people of God, which is called ecclesia, the called out ones, who will be raptured from the earth. Uh, at that time, we will also look at the uh, the throne of his glory where Christ sits, which is not the great uh, white throne, but uh, that will be brought out later on. This part here is the great tribulation. So many people think of the church building when the word church is mentioned. The church is not a building, but a body of baptized believers in the Lord Jesus Christ who has been called out from sin. During the time of the rapture, which is still yet future, this is what we're looking at here. After the rapture of the church ecclesia, those who are alive and those who are dead will be taken up from the present earth. This is the seven year tribulation period, which is starting to begin. The church ecclesia is no longer on the earth, but with Christ. Not all theologians take this position and believe that the church ecclesia will go through the tribulation period. I personally do not believe the church will go through the tribulation, and I do believe and follow the Moody Bible Institute teachings on this matter, which is D.L. Moody, uh, 1886. However, you decide based upon your own studies and prayers to God on this matter. Christ meets the rapture church at the onset of the rapture. We will find some of this in 1 Thessalonians the fourth chapter, 13 through the 18th verse, to meet the Lord in the air. Also, we'll look at Ecclesia believers are before the judgment seat of Christ. First Corinthians, the third chapter, verses 11 through 15. Second Corinthians, fifth chapter, the 10th verse. Also, during this time, you can find the information about the marriage feast. During this time of the rapture, those who remain stay on earth without the church ecclesia. The church will be gone. And you can imagine what it would be like without the love of Christ and his people on earth. The beast, the false prophets, and the antichrist will dwell on earth. Gross immorality flourishes on earth during the tribulation period. We'll find information about uh, Israel's blindness in Romans 11:27. We'll find the mis mystery of iniquity, 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter, verses 7 through 9. We will also examine this time period in Revelation 17, verses 3 to 5, 
Revelation 21, verses 9 through 10. These will all be doing the tribulation time where the church has been raptured out from the world up in heaven with Christ. During this time of the rapture, you will find Bible verses about the Great Tribulation here. Bible verses related to the Great Tribulation from the King James Version, the KJV, by Revelance. Here we will look at some of the different Bible verses that discuss the Tribulation, Matthew 24, 21. Then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. This is still yet future, but is discussed in Matthew. Daniel in the Old Testament makes this statement, uh, chapter 12, verse 1. And at the time shall Michael stand up, the great prince which standeth for the children of thy people, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time they, thy people, shall be delivered, every one that shall be found written in the book of life. We notice the words here. Uh, it says, such as never was since there was a nation, even to the same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Every one that shall be found written in the book of life. Those are the ones who will be raptured up into the air with Christ, being removed from the earth prior to the start of the tribulation time. Now, Matthew, the 24th chapter, verse 29, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. Verse number 22 of Matthew 24, And except those days shall be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Now in Revelation chapter 7, verse 14, And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they which came out of the great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Of Revelation 13, 1 through 18. And I stood upon the sand of the sea and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horn, horns ten crowns, and upon his head the name of blasphemy. Now, if we go back to the Old Testament and see what Daniel has to say. Daniel 9 and 27 and 9 and 24. I will start with verse 24 first. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgressions and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint uh, the most holy. Verse 27, and he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week, and in the midst of the week he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease, and for the overspreading of abominations he shall make it desolate. Now, Mark 13, even unto the bank and consummation, verses 1 and that day 37, I shall recommend before, to read, but I'm going to read this one. The day and as he went to the, the temple. One of his disciples said unto him, Master, see what manner of stones and what buildings are here. They were trying to get Christ to explain this because they were not yet understanding the, uh, the future, the prophecy of what Christ was talking about when it came to the building. 
read that entire chapter and you will be enlightened on that as well. Revelations 13 and 5. And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. Read Revelations 13 and 5. Now these topics and verses are auto-generated from uh, users' researches, so they were not in any specific order. These are more Bible verses and information that I really encourage you to seek out and read, such as 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter, verses 1 through 12, where it speaks, said, Let no man deceive you by any means. Matthew 24, 21 says, For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not since the beginning of the world to this time, no, nor ever shall be. Now, Daniel's 70th week is detailed in the Larkin chart I mentioned previously. Look at the chart uh, entitled the Book of Revelation. Each day represents one year. Seven days represent the week, or seven years. First half of the week is de uh, detailed here. Go back and rehash that in your thinking and in your studies, and look at that time chart. You remember what Christ says, uh, a day is as a thousand years to him. The one week that he's talking about in the um, Clarence Larkin chart shows that in the seven days that uh, uh, in that in that week that was representing of uh, uh, seven years. You have to study, you have to understand that formula. That's why in a previous book, a video, I did make mention that the Bible is a book of codes. You can't read this uh, Bible as a novel. And it takes a lot of research. And those who dig, pray, and study, please read um, out Revelation. God has not revealed to many uh, elders chapter six because they haven't chapter made 12. that great effort to get an understanding. First three and a half years of the tribulation on earth is the seven seals the seven trumpets, and the seven personages mentioned in Revelation. Then you will find the information about the locust that comes from out of the bottomless pit, then the rise of the Antichrist, the dragon, which is anti-God, the beast, which is anti-Christ, and the false prophet, the anti-spirit. Now we speak of the Trinity, when we speak of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost, those are as one. Satan has his way of duplicating what God has also done. He has his Trinity, the anti-God, the anti-Christ, and the anti-spirit. These you will read in Revelation. Revelation 16, verses 11 through 21, uh, gives the information about the vows and the plagues poured out upon those on earth during the great tribulation period. Don't be afraid to go there. This is what God is doing to those that denied him and didn't receive him as, a, as their personal savior. The Christ is taken out. These are things that will not happen to the believers uh, of Christ. The middle of the week, the, find the three we'll messengers, have the war in heaven, angel messengers, the last three and a half the years seven of vows the poured out You'll upon those on earth. 14 through we'll look at the Armageddon. Satan bound at the end of the tribulation period prior to the millennium period. During this time, God had to deal with the children of Israel for seven years. 
Remembering Israel did not accept Jesus Christ as the Messiah, they, the children and grandchildren of the nation of Israel, will go through the tribulation period without choice because they deny Christ and will suffer through the tribulation because of it. These are very troubling times. They will have to endure. Not only them, but those who were not caught up in the rapture will likewise share those horrible times of God's wrath. Scripture, looking forward toward the history. Chapter 13, verse 1. Jeremiah 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 13, verse to punish the Gentiles, who is the Gentiles? Isaiah 24 and Jeremiah 25 verses 30 describes this period. Good reading and good studying. This, this time of difficulty is to prepare Israel for the Messiah. Uh, Jesus said, He who endures, endures to the end shall be saved, as Matthew 24, 13. During the end time of the tribulation period, which is still future, we're look at this in Revelations uh, chapter 21, verses 9 through 10. Also, during this time, you find when the Battle of Armageddon will occur. Now, Dr. C. I. Scofield reference Bible says this judgment is to be distinguished from the great white throne. Here, there is no resurrection. The persons judged are living nations. No books or are open. Three classes are present. The sheep, the goats, and brethren. The time is at the return of Christ, and the scene is on the earth. All these particulars are in contrast with Revelation 20, verses 11 through 15. Here we're seeing during the end also time have of, a, of the tribulation uh, period that you can click here. Just coming into the research, millennium period, please which check is that the end out. of the tribulation. Revelation is the 20th chapter, 11 through 15. The wicked alive and dead go before the great white throne of judgment, then cast into the lake of fire, Gehenna. Notice that when you go before the great white throne, that judgment is eternal judgment. That's not the judgment where Christians go to. This is those who have rejected Christ. Second Thessalonians, the second chapter, 8 through 12, Revelation 19 and 20. We see the judgment of the Jews. Luke 21 and 18, Haggai, the second chapter, verses 6 through 7. We find that Israel is restored. Judgment of the nations, you find in Matthew 25, 25th chapter, verses 31 through 32, and Revelation 19, 17 through 21. We want to keep in mind the remembrance of the what is said here, Israel is restored. If you remember the uh, sermons that were preached about the dry bones, will these bones ever live again? The answer is yes, and you find it in prophecy. It's not more than, it is more than just a good sermon. This is a reality. The 12 tribes of Israel will be restored uh, during this time. The millennial period is a time of great joy. Living with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in total peace without the interference of Satan. Satan During will be cast the into the millennial period, period which is pit. also known as the kingdom. We find this in Micah of the fourth chapter, verses one through four, where it mentions there will be no more wars. We also find Satan and his angels are bound during this time for 1,000 years in the bottomless pit at the beginning of the millennial period. Jude chapter 1, verse 6, 2 Peter uh, chapter 3, verse 6, the angels that sin are reserved unto judgment. This is at the end of the millennium. Presently, the fallen angels are in a place as we refer to as Tetris, where they are being held all the way back during the time of their fall. They will be in that area, which is in the underworld, all the way through the church age, the, the tribulation period, 
and the millennium period. They will go before the judgment seat, uh, the great white throne judgment, which you find in Revelations, the 20th chapter. After that judgment, all of them will be cast into the lake of fire, including Satan, which is the Gehenna. Further scripture information about the millennial period, you'll find, as you see on the screen, because there is a lot of Bible verses uh, that talk about the millennial time. The word millennial is a Latin word for 1,000 years. So when we read in these different areas, as you see in Daniel, Isaiah, Psalms, Ezekiel, uh, Zechariah, all of those are during the Old Testament time but they were speaking in prophecy of what was yet to come towards the end time. The New Testament, you will find it covered in Matthew, Luke, 1 Thessalonians, and Revelations. These chapters also reflect uh, uh, looking at the millennial period as they're speaking to. So when we study and, and we use these chapters in verse, we must not get these chapters, these uh, uh, uh uh, Bible verses, none of these mixed up with any other thoughts and terminology or it will be kind of confusing. You'll find also in 1 Corinthians, the sixth chapter, verses two to three, it speaks that the saints will judge this millennial world. This is a time where all Christians who have already gone before the judgment seat of Christ, where they were rewarded for what they have done, they will be on the, in the earth during the millennial time where there be perfect peace without Satan. Micah 4, 1 and through 4 says there'll be no more wars. Revelation 20 says the entire earth during this millennial period, period is, is right in the, the position as the head of nations that people for one thousand years. Longer, years. Deuteronomy will stop killing one chapter another. Chapter 13 verse says Jews become the head of the nations. Although Old Testament scripture speaking, looking toward the future in prophecy of what will happen. Only God can take the minds of people. This was over 3,000, 4,000 years before and, and bring out this information about what happened in the end time. Uh, Jacob's ladder, as we've talked about, or Jacob's dream or Jacob's trouble, we find in Genesis, the 28th chapter, 10, uh, verse 10 to through 20. For an interest, see YouTube video, which I have on a site here, it gives you more information. It's 45 minutes. But we got to study. You can't just look at this video. You have to study, research, and I give you all the information I can for you to look this information up. And I hope you get as excited about what God is getting ready to do as I have become just learning and studying this information because God is really good. You also find in Revelation 20, verses 7 through 9, after the thousand years Satan was loose, he shall deceive the nations, Gog and Magog and Satan together, gather uh, for battle. But God stepped in, fire came down from God out of heaven, and devoured them, the beast, and death and hell, false prophets, were cast into and the, the lake of fire, sent and Thank torment. You and this night, is the second day and death, night, for every second computer in third chapter six verse. The angels that sinned were, and were reserved unto this judgment. So they likewise will be cast into the judgment of the lake of fire, Gehenna. Now moving into the renovation of the earth by fire, we'll look at these scriptures. After God has gotten rid of Satan, all the, the devils and the uh, the fallen angels, all those that opposed him, didn't believe in him, he has already done, sent them to everlasting eternity in, in the punishment. Now he's getting ready to renovate the earth for a new Jerusalem. Let's look at this first. Second Peter, the, the third chapter, verses 1 through 18, and third chapter, verse 8. The heavens will pass away with a loud noise. Malachi 4 and 1, the day is coming. 
Revelations 21, 1 through 27, a new heaven and a new earth. Luke 12, 49, I am come to send fire on the earth. Revelations 20 and 11, the great white throne judgment, which just ended, was Satan and all of them have been judged. Isaiah 34, 4, and all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved. Praise the Lord. God is getting ready to bring a change. All those things that he suffered through is now done away with, and he's getting in preparation for a, a new home for all the believers to, to live eternally at his, in his presence. Praise God for that. As we continue with the excitement of this, go back a little bit back to the Old Testament. In Exodus, we read uh, Exodus 3, verse 2, as the bush burned and not consumed. That was also an illustration of what God was going to do in the future when he remodeled the earth by fire. As the bush that burned, we know that story of Moses and the burning bush. Likewise, the earth will burn and it will not be consumed. Isn't that good news? Jude chapter 1, verse 7, by undergoing a punishment of eternal fire, this world will be cleansed. None of that contamination, the wrongdoing will ever enter the, to the newness which he is preparing. Ecclesiastics 1, verse 4, but the earth remains forever. You hear that? Although he destroys it by fire, but it does not burn up, it will still be here. Mark, the 13th chapter, 31st verse. It says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Hold on. What is it talking about? That old heaven and that old earth, as we know it, will pass away. But remember what it says in Ecclesi Ecclesiastes, but the earth remains forever. Joel said, which is in the Old Testament, second chapter, verse 31, the sun shall turn to darkness, the moon to blood, before the great and awesome day of the Lord come. Prophecy. In this new time of God creating a new heaven and a new earth, we find the same situation in the beginning. Genesis 1 and 1. God recreates the heavens and the earth. Revelation 6, verse 14. The sky vanished like a scroll. Re Revelation 21, verse 22. And I saw the new city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. This is all good news, and we ought to rejoice and be glad to know what God is getting ready to do. We will find in Psalms 37, chapter, verse 29, the righteous inherit the land and dwell on it forever. 2 Corinthians, uh, the second chapter, verse 9. What God has prepared for those who love him. This is Old Testament and New Testament agreeing about prophecy of what's getting ready to happen in the future. Once again, this is good news. Talking about what God is going to do for his own people. And here John is still talking about the things that he saw. Revelation 21 verses 1 through 6, the first heaven and the first earth passed away, and I saw the holy city, that new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God. That's good news. Revelation 21, verses 9 through 14, the bride of the Lamb. This is where we talk about the 12 gates and the 12 tribes. That's talking about what he has done all those years prior to this with his chosen people. He's bringing them into the, the the everlasting life on the in the new Jerusalem. We ought to be excited and happy about that because we're going to be partakers of that as well. Revelation 21, verse 16. The city is approximately 1,500 miles by 1,500 miles by 1,500 miles. That's square. That's a lot. Now, the question is, is all of God's people from the very beginning of time that believed in him is brought all the way to the end for eternal life and we are going to live on earth together in this new Jerusalem. We're talking about a great time and Satan is not there. We're going to have a good time. 
Now, just in case you're still not feeling me how we're talking about this in this everlasting life, let's look at Proverbs, the 8th chapter, verse 35, where it says, Whosoever findeth me findeth life. That's everlasting life. John 10, uh, verse 28 to 30, And I gave unto them eternal life. This is in the New Jerusalem. 1 John, 2nd chapter, verse 17, The world passed away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. First John 5th chapter, verse 11. God hath given to us eternal life through his Son. That is good news. We don't have to worry about the problems of the world right now. We can shout about what's going to happen because God is going to keep his word. Now, the walls of this new Jerusalem is going to have 12 foundations. The foundation names are the 12 apostles of the Lamb. That's in Revelation 21, 14. Revelation 21, 17 through 18. The wall of the city measured 144 cubits. Wall built of jasper. The city is pure gold, clear as glass. Revelation 22, 1 through 2. The tree of life in the city. You remember that tree of life? That was in the Garden of Eden, well, we know where it's going to be. As we continue to talk about this new Jerusalem, Revelations chapter 21, verses 22 through 24, there is no temple in the new Jerusalem. Ain't that something? Let's find out why. They did not need a holy place on holy ground. There would be no sun or moon in the new Jerusalem. The glory of God lights the city. And his lamp is the lamb. What more can I say? Praise the Lord. Now the word of the Lord is this. And I gave unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My father which gave them to me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hand. I and my father are one. That is John 10. 28 through verse 30. Now that we're at the end of the story, we shall have everlasting life in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is what we're preparing for now. We're going to win in the end. <music>